Hey guys, Michael here, the Homemade Genius, here with another video for you today. Um, it's another knife video. That's right, I got a knife build going on here. Um, hopefully you saw the drawings at the beginning of this video that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm going with this. I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm not doing a full tang. I'm doing more of a um, <clears throat> you know, partial tang, rat tail tang. I've heard them called a lot of different things. Uh, not going to go too crazy on the design here. Again, I'm still trying to get my feet wet. However, with this build, I did spend the extra money and decided to go ahead and order some 5160. I settled on 5160 because it, I hear, and again, I don't know, but I've heard it's easier to work with. Um, it's not quite as as uh, brittle. It's not quite as, um, what was it that was said? Uh, difficult to temper out and I, and again I'm trying to heat treat this myself and I know before anybody jumps off the bridge screaming at me that I should really send this out um, but again you know this is not about a guy trying to learn how to be a professional knife builder I want to be someone that can build knives again this is the channel of the homemade genius not about being a genius but about stepping outside of your box and trying something different Stick around, watch the build. I hope you enjoy it. I'll probably try to narrate over top of it because uh, last experience trying to make one of these knives, it's kind of loud. Stick around. We're going to get started now. My new baby. Hey guys, Michael here. Alright, a uh, little update. I am going to try to heat treat the knife. Um, I've got a little makeshift forge here. Really, it's very simple. I just stacked up a bunch of bricks, uh, made a little cavity for the coal. I'm only doing it for heat treating, so I don't need you know a big uh, blacksmithing forge. Um, I've got a Craftsman leaf blower and a little channel set at the bottom. You can see where the... Um, you can see right there where the hole is and basically there's a channel that goes right up into where the coals are so when I plug it in and cut the leaf blower on add a little oxygen to the mix and hopefully get a little heat out of this
I've got some rare earth magnets here that I'm going to use to test the uh, magnetism of the blade. <clears throat> Trying to reach about 1550 degrees roughly. Uh, the way to test that is, as I just said, if uh, the metal is no longer magnetic, then you've won. It's getting close. I don't know how well you guys can hear me. It's it's pretty loud, but it's getting close. I can see it glowing pretty well. Give it a few more minutes. I got two magnets here, so I'll test it out in a second. All right, I just tested it and it's ready. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shot and hope I don't blow up. Yeah, I was scared. Give me a break. I never did this before. But it looks like it's cooking. All right, next set is to temper it. I'm going to stick it in the oven uh, about 450 degrees for an hour. I'm not going to bother showing that. That's pretty straightforward. I will have the oven empty, though. Don't worry. And I will clean this off a little bit before I put it in. Be back. Okay guys, well here it is, heat treated, ready to go, um, all nasty and gnarly looking, which is usually what happens after you go through the heat treating process. <clears throat> um, I gotta tell you, I was a little excited about the forge that I made downstairs, it was kind of a last minute thing. Um, I actually had thought about not even heat treating the knife, just because I didn't want to send it out, um, I didn't feel like it was the kind of quality of work that warranted being sent out to have heat treated. Especially because, again, all this is trial and error for me. Um, so, you know, I was toying around with that idea. And I thought, you know, last couple of days I kept thinking, all right, I'll give it a shot. And then last night I happened to find some old lump coal and some Kingsford charcoal. And uh, had some old bricks lying around and a leaf blower. And I said, I might as well give it a shot. Uh, and it worked great. Um, you know, you're supposed to get it nice and hot, even cherry red. And get it to the point where it loses its magnetism, which it did. Came out perfect, quenched it in oil, and then brought it inside, cleaned it off a little bit, threw it in the oven at about 450 for about an hour and a half, two hours. Woke up this morning, opened the oven to a nice crispy knife blade. Um, next step in the process is to clean it off, and get it relatively shiny. I'm not going to polish it with a mirror finish and all that stuff. I'm actually putting a, a finish on here. So anyway, I'm going to start cleaning that in just a minute. Take a quick second. There's the guard talk about the handle um, I'm kind of going with a style like this kind of handle on here so when you put it on like a pistol grip kind of handle that's uh, that's roughly what I'm going for just kind of toying around with a few different ideas and layouts last night I went ahead and, and epoxy two pieces of wood together I know it's thick stock and I know it's not hardwood and this and that and, and, and again I, I just I'm stair-stepping myself into this I don't want to run out and spend you know tons of money on top of the line everything you know if you're following my series you know that the first knife I made was just you know nine dollar mild steel I got at Home Depot so I want to understand the process I want to learn the process I want to carve the wood shape the wood mold the wood and I don't want to do that with expensive wood um, it's not worth it to me to do that I'm not going to get rid of these knives these are going to be things I'll be able to look back and say look what I've made look what I've made you might be thinking it's a bit thick, and it is a bit thick intentionally. Um, again, I'm going to square this block out so you won't see this edges. It'll look like one thick piece of wood. And uh, if you notice the thickness here, you know, it's about a quarter inch on either side that I'm going to have to be removing off this to get this back down to where it needs to be, which is not that big of a deal because on this pistol grip handle, if you can kind of tell what I'm doing, it's going to get fatter towards the end. 
Um, is it going to be a full half inch thicker on the other end? No, that's just, I can even tell in my mind that that wouldn't feel comfortable. But I do want to have enough stock there to take away to get to the shape that I want. It's easier to take material away than it is to magically put it back together. I went ahead just for tests and uh, struck this thing on a fire steel. In fact, let me get it. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who saw, this was the first knife that I built. Um, and this was mild steel, and I made a, a, a <clears throat> effort to try to to try to temper the steel and, and heat treat it myself, and it didn't work out too well. If I had probably had the forge when I did this, it probably would have came out a little bit better. But I want to show you the difference in this knife, um, and keep in mind that this is a very true back right here. The spine is very true; it's very sharp. Um, took me a long time to do it. I used the same methodology on this one that I did on this one. Um, this doesn't get a whole lot of play out of it. This on the other hand, that steel, that high carbon steel is definitely <laughs> makes a world of difference. That's all I got to say. Um, I'm going to polish this up and, and again get it a little shinier and I, I have total confidence that this steel is going to give that same results every single time as opposed to the mild steel that I used in here. That's my update. Next time you see me, I will be, I will have this polished off a little bit better. I'll have the handle done and we'll be ready to put the handle, uh, hopefully put the handle together. All right guys, well here it is the next day. Uh, the handle has been fully affixed onto here. I did some polishing on the copper at the top right here. Nothing fancy. I really don't want this to be shiny and pretty new looking and all that kind of stuff. I, I want it kind of rough looking. Put some tape, actually Gorilla Tape, which is a lot better than duct tape in my opinion, as well as some bubble wrap around the handle because I don't want to cut my hands while I'm doing this. Got the drawing out and I'm going to sit here on the uh, belt sander and go ahead and get some of this knocked out. So stick around. Let's go ahead and get some work done and uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. guys here it is knife number three third knife I've ever made I'm calling it copperhead um, here's the uh, artist rendering and here's what we ended up with um, had to make a few adjustments along the way as you usually do they don't ever come out exactly the way the drawing does um, but I'm, I'm happy with it I you know I've got the copper ends on here hence the name copperhead and, uh, you know, I've never done a partial tang. I mean, how many knives have I really made? It's only been my third one. Uh, but I'm happy with it. I've got an etched blade and kind of, I know it's not Damascus steel, but it's kind of got that, you know, hammered out Damascus look. Um, I actually showed this to a friend of mine and he asked me if I forged it. I said, no, I didn't forge it. Um, and I told him how I did it. And he sat there for a second and he looked at the handle. I mean, he looked at the blade and said, how'd you get the hammer marks in there? And it's just by the, the way I etched it, and it came out exactly exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, it's got a nice true back right here. Uh, you saw me demonstrate on the fire steel before, and, it, and it, it's definitely doing the same. I did my uh, normal finish on here with a little flame kiss with a little bit of oil. I'm going to have to put a few more treatments of, uh, of, uh, of uh, tongue oil on here. 
before it's completely done but uh, for right now I just wanted to get this knife out and show it to you guys I'm gonna do a field test on it I want to see how it fares um, I gotta tell you again if I hadn't said this already in the video and even if I have it's worth mentioning um, this steel takes a damn good edge and I, I got hold on and you, you can see where I've been testing it on the paper you know it's 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 great I can't you know it needs a lot more work the edge has got some dull spots in here right at the back the tip of it I've worked that that's come out perfect um, you know it's just a few things here and there I still got to finish up on it but I wanted to get this out and show it to you it's been a while since I put a video out um, and I was really excited about doing this knife I really uh, the back panel here, the back pommel rather, I really like the way this came out. This is one of those things where it was in my head and now it's real and I couldn't believe it. Um, I, I had to get, I had a hard time finding copper bolts, the closest, uh, or rather screws. The closest I could get were these antique screws like uh, copper screws that you would use on a, a fixture or something. Um, and I was a little concerned as to how they made them and whether or not I could polish them to look like copper and I'm, I'm pretty happy it came out looks looks pretty damn good really um, before anyone asks no I'm not gonna polish this copper up I got it relatively smooth I left it rough I left the scratches on here and I left it irregular I want this knife to be <clears throat> um, old looking rustic used aged I want to patina to get on this copper and, and it won't take long at all I mean I literally just got done messing with this thing not long ago and uh you know it, it came out you know 